Hey everyone, welcome back to the Brave and the Boys show. I'm your host, Jake. Uh, Jordan is manning the camera. Um, today we're gonna talk about something that I love. Uh, my favorite way to collect comics is Absolute Editions. Um, so we're gonna do my top 10 favorite absolutes. Now, just to be clear, this is in no particular order. Um, and if it's from a series, it's just gonna be one book per series. So instead of saying, I like this book from the series, it's gonna be, I like the whole series. So we're gonna to touch on um, my story, art, and build design of the absolute, why they're my favorite. So let's dive in. Deep within a bleak and dismal swamp, hidden beneath its murky waters, lies the headquarters of the most sinister villains of all time. Guys, first up, we have one of my favorite comic book series of all time, and that is Absolute Sandman. Sandman was written by Neil Gaiman and has a host of artists. Um, it's an incredible story of mysticism and dreams and nightmares. Um, it's gonna take you through the world of the dreaming and have an amazing cast of characters. Um, the build quality of the Absolutes are second to none. Um, amazing leather, awesome slipcase art, and it just gets better over time. I mean, Sandman Overture probably has the best looking art of any Absolute that I own. If you wanna learn more about how to collect Sandman, we have this video talking about all the ways to collect Sandman. But next up, let's move to number two on my list. Guys, next up we have number two on my list, which is probably the Absolute I've reread the most times. I kinda come back to it about once a year, and that is Absolute New Frontier, written by the late, great Darwin Cook. Um, he was an amazing writer and an amazing artist. The, it's basically just a huge love letter to the Silver Age and the 1950s of comics. It's an amazing origin story for characters like Martian Manhunter and Hal Jordan, to me the definitive origin stories for them. Um, and it's just a great inspiring story. So, you know, if you need a book to lift up your spirits and give you some hope, New Frontier is absolutely that book. Absolutely, you guys get that? Guys, for number three on my list, it's gotta be Kingdom Come. Uh, it's written by Mark Wade with art by the amazing Alex Ross. Um, if you are a DC fan or a comic book fan, you've obviously seen Alex Ross's art. Usually he'll just do cover homages, but this is one of the stories where he does the art throughout. So if you've seen his art, it's incredible. It needs to be in the oversize. Um, the story itself is interesting for me. I usually go towards DC stories that are a little more optimistic and Kingdom Come is definitely a darker take on the future. It's what would happen in Superman, Batman, and the heroes are older and the world's kind of beat them down. And it's about how humanity's relationship to the superheroes have changed over time. Um, I think it's an incredible story. Everyone should read it, um, but you're definitely gonna pick this up for the art. Guys, up next, we have one of the most violent series on this list, uh, and that is Preacher. Preacher is an amazing story about a preacher who gets something called the Word of God, who's able to command anything, whether it's an angel, a human, or God himself, to do anything he wants. It's a, just a totally sacrilegious, you know, immoral story with vampires and drinking and, you know, explosions. It's an awesome series. Um, if you can stomach it and you can stomach the sacrilegious side of it, I say you have to go for it. I had the omnibuses and I did sell them to Jordan um, to get the absolutes. I am missing number one, but I do have it pre-ordered from cheap graphic novels. Please sponsor me. <laughs> I mean, look at this thing. It's just like, it's like a Bible. You know, it's, it's just awesome. Um, but Absolute Preacher is one I've always wanted on my bookshelves and I can't wait to have the full collection. Hey guys, so next one on my list might be a controversial take uh, for some, but it is Absolute Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. Uh, there's a total of three absolutes. Um, it was illustrated by a host of amazing artists, so I can't name them all here, but they'll be in the description below. Um, and it has some of the best aesthetics of an absolute. So one thing that's cool about it is if you feel the front, it's got a mossy green texture to it, which is pretty incredible. Um, it is one of, I think it's the only way to collect oversized Swamp Thing as there is no omnibus. Um, but the reason it's controversial is not the story. I mean, the story is emotionally impactful. It's thought provoking. It makes you deal with what makes us human. Um, it's an amazing love story, but it has amazing elements of horror. Uh, what's controversial about it is they did do recoloring. Um, I know some people aren't a big fan of recoloring. For some books like Swamp Thing, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, for me, I honestly could go either way. Um, for me, this was the first way I read the story, so the recoloring is fine for me, but I do think the original coloring kind of adds to that retro horror movie. That being said, if you do want Swamp Thing in an oversized format, this is the way to go. Guys, next up on the list, we have Batman Absolute Hush. Um, I mean, this is this had to be on here. It, it's written by Jeff Loeb with art by the amazing Jim Lee, and you need that Jim Lee art in oversized. The way, I mean, every scene in this comic book could be a cover. Uh, the way he draws Batman is just amazing. Um, it's going to have 
every Batman villain you ever wanted in a storyline. I mean, I think the whole thing was just an excuse for Jim Lee to draw every Batman villain ever. Everyone from Killer Croc to the Riddler to the Joker. Um, it's going to have a new villain, Hush, who you'll have to read to find out. Um, it is much better than the movie. So if you've seen the animated movie, you don't know who Hush is. Um, it's an incredible story that really just just shines a light on how amazing Batman is. Uh, my favorite absolutes are ones that are standalone stories like this one, so you can just jump in and read it, and it's awesome. Next up on the list, guys, is Watchmen Absolute, uh, written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Dave Gibbons. This book is widely considered to be one of the greatest comic book stories ever told, and for good reason. It's a deconstruction of the superhero genre, and Moore's writing is thought-provoking, emotionally impactful, and incredible. Gibbons' artwork in the nine-panel grid is a standout, with each panel like expertly crafted to convey the story's complex themes. Um, this is kind of continuing the trek of controversial choices. Um, in like 10 seconds, why it's controversial is that Alan Moore had the rights to Watchmen stolen from him once the original trade paperback went out of print. Um, so this book technically shouldn't exist. Um, I will say one other thing. I did say that if I choose an absolute from a series that I'm talking about all the absolutes in the series. So you um, are 100% correct if you know that I am throwing in Doomsday Clock as part of this series. So I love Doomsday Clock as well. Um, I think together they look amazing on the shelf and Absolute Watchmen is worth picking up even if Alan Moore is going to put a curse on you. Guys, next on my list is the Fourth World Absolute Edition, written and illustrated by the legendary Jack Kirby. This book collects Jack Kirby's groundbreaking Fourth World saga, which introduces characters like Darkseid, Mr. Miracle, and the new gods to the DC Universe. Kirby's artwork is iconic, the story is epic, and it showcases his unmatched creativity and imagination. Um, I will say I had the Omnibus first because when I bought the Omnibus, the Absolutes hat didn't exist yet. And then when they were announced, I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I have to own that. But I couldn't justify double dipping in Fourth World because it's amazing, but it's also not something that I can read often. I read it once and it was amazing. Um, everyone should own it, everyone should read it. But I, it's not like I go back to Fourth World often. Luckily, me and Jordan made a deal. He gave me a great price on abs uh, the Omnibus for Fourth World and I was able to buy the two Absolutes. Um, so happy. Uh, the first one was out of print for a time, but now they're both in print, so you can get them both, um, and I highly recommend it. You have to see the Jack Kirby artwork. Also, this slipcase is probably the coolest looking slipcase out of all of them. Guys, at number nine on the list, you know I have to give my boy Superman some love. So next up, we have All-Star Superman, written by Grant Morrison, with, in my opinion, amazing art by Frank Quietly. Um, I know some people, you know, that's not their jelly, but I personally love Frank Quietly's art um, and the story. Let's dive into that for a second. Um, what would the Man of Steel do if he was running out of time? So I won't get into spoilers, but it's the last days of Superman, and it really just shows what makes Superman such an enduring icon. Um, it's definitely the inspiration for James Gunn's upcoming Superman Legacy movie, so I think everyone should read it before, and if you like the Frank Quietly art, it should definitely be on your bookshelf. And guys, finally, uh, my last absolute was a whale that I harpooned. That is Absolute Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's written by Marv Wolfen and illustrated by George Perez, who we sadly lost last year. Um, it changed the face of the DC landscape forever. It reset the status quo. Um, everything post-crisis is the DC that I want to collect. It's a sweeping epic that has every character, multiple universes. It introduces the Annie Monitor, an amazing villain, and it just reset the whole status quo for DC. Uh, when you look at the amount of characters that George Perez fit into every single page, it's just astounding. Uh, it comes with an amazing compendium, so um, I had to get it in the oversized format. There is no omnibus. I mean, there was a box set, but I didn't know how to fit that on a bookshelf. Um, so I decided to hunt for the Absolute Edition. Um, I mean, I still remember the day I was in the break room at work when I should have been working uh, eBay bidding and eBay bidding war for this book, um, but I harpooned my whale. Guys, uh, thank you so much. Let's jump into my final thoughts and the conclusions. And there you have it, folks. Those are my top 10 DC Absolute Editions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into some of the best and most iconic stories in the DC Universe that were my personal favorite. Let me know in the comments down below which Absolute Editions are your favorite. Did I miss one? Is there one you totally don't agree with? Let me know in the comments. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to The Brave and the Boys for more comic book content. And remember, keep reading and stay brave.